The Vegas resident will head back to the States with every belt there is to grab onto. What's up, it's your boy Remus and welcome back to Remus Boxing News where we talk about the trending topics in the boxing world today. And today we're recapping and going through the before, during and after of the fight between Combosis Jr. and um, Devin Haney, which of course we saw a new undisputed champion where you know now there's no dispute between um in terms of who the king of the lightweight division is now right for me i'll say this the lightweight division is my favorite division because i feel like the the potential matchups and um the skills and talent that is there that just makes for a, a lot of excitement in terms of us being curious about oh what could this match up and then how could this match up go there's so many different uh combinations of fights that we could see if these guys saw it out and just get on so devin also seems to understand that too because he is or he seems quite eager to just make sure that these fights happen regardless of any contractual disagreements that they would have before the fight with George Cambosis, he conceded to every single demand to make it happen. I stepped up to the plate. No matter if I had to go overseas, no matter if I had to get a vaccine, no matter if, if I had to take less money, no matter if I, no matter if, if I had to go sign with another promoter, no, no matter what I had to do to make the big fights happen, uh, I, I, I did it. I never was no no cap, none of that. If, if a fighter really want to make a fight happen, we we the ones with the power. No matter what promoter, who we sign to, if you really want to make a fight happen, you can do whatever you got to do to, to make it happen. And, and, and that's what I did. Can't say I disagree with that. And that's one reason why I really respect Devin. You know, he's trying to give us those big fights for legacy. You know, he even took like less of money in, in, in order to make that fight happen. And it's funny because I think the reason why Combosis wanted to dominate the uh, contractual proceedings in such a way is that it kind of went to his head in my opinion like i was watching him before the fight thinking it kind of has gone to his head in the same way that it went to lopez's head um, after he beat lomachenko but let's talk about the fight now right there was three aspects in my opinion that totally allowed devin haney to win this fight convincingly it was the jab it was his understanding of range and it was his ability to nullify Cambos's offense right so we talk about the jab. He was constantly stinging it in his face. Pop, 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 waiting, pop. Just, it, it was a quick stinging jab. Of course, these are not the ones that are going to knock a guy out or really put hurt on him, but it's going to sting his face. It's going to make him think twice about coming in. It's going to put some, another reason for the guy to say, hmm, maybe I shouldn't just step in. Maybe I shouldn't just come in throwing a shot. The only way to get on the other side of that jab is to kind of, just jump in there which is what we saw because it was opening up and forcing distance between the fighters um the second aspect was was his understanding of range he did this Haney understood how to use his footwork to stay in range when he needed to but not get close enough to enable uh Kambosis to get off on shots that were unnecessary from the perspective of Haney I mean he wasn't staying in there making silly decisions he would jab, he would lean back, keep doing that, jab, lean back. He's not trying to stay in there unnecessarily. And of course, Kimbosis is lunging in. So when he lunges in, but Haney's not staying in there, he's moving back and then circling around. How do you get in close? How do you get shots off? And then additionally, Haney's going to be able to get off on counter shots and so forth. If the guy's lunging in, he can see it from a mile off. So Haney nullified Combosis, you know, as he said he would, he said, look, his best attributes, I'll take it away. We didn't see any moments of dominance by Combosis. And part of that was because of the thing that people said made the fight boring, which was his clinching. But I thought it was a, it was masterful use of a defensive aspect of fighting. Because every any time that Combosis would kind of get set up, he has to get through this massive problem which is the jab once he gets through okay he gets a shot through but then he has to face the fact that his offense keeps getting shut down because he's being clinched even he, he wasn't even really able to probably land one shot but when he did boom it's shut down he can't even land a second and a third so how do you hurt the guy because you're not throwing combinations and then how do you rack up um points 
because you're just getting stung with a jab and you're not throwing combinations yourself. So really he was just totally nullified and I wouldn't be surprised if someone said they gave all 12 rounds to Haney. You know, maybe 10 to two was fair, but I would also understand you if you said all t um, 12 rounds you gave to Haney. He did, he deserved that win convincingly. Um, and it brings us to the rematch. Well, you know, George's dad, he seems to think so. You know, he thinks that in a, in another fight, they'll know exactly what to do. Pressure on um, on Devin, you know, and you just let Devin get too comfortable all the time. So if you're going to be comfortable with that jab, you know, you're not going to be able to get inside. So, you know, George had to basically just execute what we did at training. And then if you're letting them bank the rounds with that jab and moving and obviously, you know, you know, we're, um, you know, we're, we're professionals, mate. So the thing is, um, we're going to execute and look at it all. And, um, you know, George has to start fast. That's what he has to do. He's got to make Devin uncomfortable from the get-go. But can he make him uncomfortable? Me personally, I don't think so. I don't think he's on Devin Haney's level. I just think Haney's just that good. It's like Haney, Combosis could do better, let's say that. But so could Haney, that's my opinion. And it wasn't even that Combosis was bad. I just think it was because Haney was so good. But maybe Ryan Garcia didn't agree at first because um, he tweeted, uh, to Javante Davis, are you watching this stuff? When we fight, don't let it be like this, you know, because he felt the fight was uh, pretty boring. Definitely wasn't the most exciting fight, but yet, you know, Devin Haney, congrats to him for winning that fight. He did his thing, but uh, I just didn't see you no know, urgency for them to want to, like, I would say separate themselves from one another. But in reflection, you know, on in the build-up to his uh, fight coming up, actually, he did um, give Haney a bit more respect. You know, I said it was boring and whatnot. It was NyQuil. Uh, I'm just talking shit like I always do. Honestly, seeing him win, I've been been uh, with him since the amateurs. So he, deep in my heart, I'm very proud of him because uh, I know how hard he's worked since he was a kid, just like myself. So I'm proud and uh, I wish the best for him. And we're wishing the best in terms of the potential matchups that could happen in the lightweight division. I want to know if you think it's worth there being a rematch and what type of what fights would you like to see in terms of the lightweight contenders? Who would you like Devin Haney to fight next if it's not going to be George Kambosis if he doesn't um, activate the rematch clause? So comment down below. Let Remus know. Peace.